We are back for episode 3 of module 8 in the Anamorphic Cookbook. Continuing our post-production problem-solving journey for anamorphic filmmaking, we already discussed proper de-squeeze and timeline settings, as well as more common issues such as fixing skewing or unwanted distortion. In this episode, we'll look at less common issues such as the old-time anamorphic mumps that I mentioned in module 1, and correcting for setups that have a variable squeeze, as in less squeeze at close focus than at infinity. The two issues, mumps and variable squeeze, are directly connected, so addressing one fixes the other. You might be wondering what kind of whack gear you need to use to even come across these problems. To name a few, the classic koas, all Lomo square fronts, and some Sure lenses, for example. Variable squeeze used to be a very common issue when anamorphic adapters rule the earth. Most double or synchro focus setups, such as adapters in early Hollywood, work like this. Squeeze is the advertised value at infinity, but a lesser value at minimum focus. For most Koa adapters, for example, you have two times squeeze at infinity, but 1.8 something at mince. If you don't pay attention to this when de-squeezing your footage by the number on the lens, on set or in post, you will find that your close-up shots look a bit off. Like your leading actor is a touch wider than in real life. If you're an actor in Hollywood and someone does that to your face, you get in your contract that they can't use that gear to film you ever again. And yep, those contracts existed. But today, with the competitive indie market, if you deliver something that looks off, you might just not be hired again. Lucky for us, a solution exists, albeit annoying. It relies heavily on your prep day before going on set. What we need is a chart or a graph for how the squeeze behaves over the focus range. The only way I figured to do this is manually filming circular objects at every focus distance, de-squeezing them and writing that down on a piece of paper. I get that it's also pretty challenging to find a decent, perfectly round object at infinity focus and step closer from there. So we're going to cheat and use diopters to shorten infinity. A set with a plus 0.5 and a plus 1 should be more than enough, so we're working in a range between 2 meters or 6 feet and 1 meter or 3 feet. For the object, I highly recommend using a ball of some sort. You can get away with a flat circle, but using an actual sphere greatly reduces the chances of skewing the results if you're not perfectly parallel to your object. I'm going to use a styrofoam ball for this process, and I'll place them in front of a distortion grid because might as well acquire more data. For this lens, I will film my sphere at infinity, 10 meters, 5 meters, 3 meters, 2 meters, 1.5 meters, 1 meter, and 0.8 meters. I am going overboard with the number of samples, but I want a detailed graph. You can decide the amount of samples you need in your particular scenario. Now. I'll bring these clips into After Effects or Resolve, create a perfect circle with the same height as the sphere in the shot, and adjust my squeeze value for each clip until all of them are perfect circles. Now, I'll plot the values on a graph. If I'm using an adapter, I only need the chart done once. The values will not change based on the taking lens. Equipped with one of these charts for every lens I'm using, I am ready to address variable squeeze across all the lenses on a project. Doing so relies on taking more notes on set with approximate focus distances for every shot, as well as initial and final distances for rack focus shots whenever the rack is considerable. Here are a few before and after clips corrected for the variable squeeze instead of the nominal squeeze factor. The other thing you can also address by capturing all these charts is evaluate how evenly squeeze is applied across the frame itself. For mainly vintage anamorphics, you will notice that the edges are much more compressed than the center. Fixing this type of unevenness takes a lot more effort. But the task is a lot easier by simply having these charts 
that we filmed. Here I am using an After Effects preset called AMC, which you can get in the link below this video. And the sliders help you try and even out the overcompression on the edges and create a little less distorted image. With all of that said, I wouldn't go through these lengths to repair a shot unless it's a key moment to the story. And this is the only shot that covers it and the overcompression is getting in the way. Fortunately, most lenses these days don't create this type of issue anymore, but we still have plenty of people using adapters, which makes the topic worth covering here. Heal the mumps. What are your thoughts on this type of repair? Fun things that only come to play when we use anamorphic lenses. In the next episode, we'll go for something completely different and smooth the process of live streaming in widescreen and wrap up this module with a brief overview of anamorphics and visual effects. So stay tuned. Chit of Haddings, out.